Airbus have been receiving a lot of media attention in the aviation industry lately because of their very widely popular A321neo series, which has been attracting aircraft orders left, right and centre. It has been taking the industry by storm and today we're going to be discussing why this is the case. For operators with the Airbus A320 family, the A321neo is the perfect aircraft because pilots can simply transition between other aircraft in the family. One example could be a pilot doing one sector in the 319, then flying the 321 on another sector. This is because the aircraft are the same cockpit and the same operating procedures. This doesn't apply though to cabin crew, which still have to be trained as there are additional emergency exits in the 321 in comparison to its smaller counterparts. Another good point for the airlines with the A321neo family is the larger 321neo shares the same parts as the 320. For example, the same winglets, same cockpit screens or lights. This means airlines can purchase parts in bulk for their aircraft and save some money where possible. This works incredibly well for airlines like JetBlue, which do have a lot of Airbus aircraft in their fleet. If a landing light is faulty for one of their A321neos, they will have a large stock of landing lights which are the same type as they can fit other aircraft that JetBlue operates, and it's generally why we always see such a heightened importance on fleet commonality when deciding, say, a customer's next order. Even for airlines without the A320 family, the 321neo can fit in very well with their operations. It's an aircraft that most airports can accommodate since its wings are the same size as the smaller 320. And the larger new engine option can take off and land in a similar distance in comparison to the smaller counterpart, meaning that any airline can integrate it pretty effortlessly. The Airbus A321neo can also be a perfect short-haul regional jet, providing quick relief for airlines in need of fulfilling capacity demands. This is common especially in Europe, where airlines tend not to change aircraft configurations across their short-haul fleets. A British Airways A321neo might make a hop to Manchester, but then say fly for almost 5 hours to Cairo. This benefits airlines more than passengers, as comfort can often be lacklustre. The aircraft has really often been praised as well for its stellar economics, being able to seat a maximum of 244 people, meaning that its cost per seat is incredibly low. As of riding the piece, the most dense A321neo is flying by Wizz Air, with 239 seats. Another incredible economic factor of the plane is the noise and pollution factor. For example, it costs £4 per seat for an A321neo to take off from London Heathrow's airport, whereas it costs £11 per seat for an A319 to do the same. That means it costs three times more per seat to operate a 140 seat 319 from the airport than that of the 321neo. For example, the 321, even if 70% full, in comparison to a full 319, the aircraft we've been using as a benchmark, is still more profitable. Flexibility is another major reason why airlines have been eyeing up this aircraft. It has a lot of variants which fit well on niche routes or for off-peak times. One of the Airbus A321neo variants which is booming recently has been the Neo LR, which has a range of 4,000 nautical miles compared to the standard A321neo, which has 500 miles less in range capability. As said previously, for crews there is no difference between the standard and LR variant and maintenance is almost identical if not. Another A321neo variant that has also recently hit headlines is their XLR, the extra long range, which extends the range to 4,700 nautical miles by installing another fuel tank in the rear of the plane, as well as limiting the passenger capacity to 220 seats. Another change that was made was to the flaps, as they are no longer double slotted, but rather all one piece, more similar to the 320neo. The landing gear has also been refined to ensure that the weight of the aircraft is not too heavy, however the dimensions of the XLR stay the same as other variants in that family. Airlines have already begun adopting the A321LR on long routes within their network, and there are plenty of examples to highlight this, such as JetBlue's A321LR services to London and shortly Amsterdam, Air Astana fly their A321LR to Western Europe and have a flight time of around 6 hours. Widespread Production 
Airbus has committed heavily to ensuring that they can get the most orders they can, and one perfect example of this would be the family production factories. This is relevant because these factories can also produce the 321neo. Airbus is a factory in Toulouse, France and Hamburg, Germany, where most of their aircraft are built in this series. However, they also have a factory in Alabama, where they produce 320neos and A220s at a similar rate. They have a factory too in China, where they build some 320 family aircraft. This is a big factor, as the factories could also help in reducing import taxes, since the aircraft are locally built rather than, say, imported. A modern alternative to the Boeing 757. The A321neo has often been dubbed the modern alternative to the 757-200, as it seats roughly the same amount of people and flies a similar distance. The 321neo has already replaced the Boeing 757s in airlines such as Air Astana. American Airlines have phased out their 757s during the height of the pandemic, and it could be said that the neo is a good replacement for the plane. Meanwhile, Iceland Air have ordered the A321neo LR to replace their 757 aircraft later down the line. All in all, the A321neo could well be seen as the perfect aircraft for some airlines, as it is profitable without a full load of passengers, as well as being quiet and also efficient. It's practically the same aircraft as the smaller A321neo, so it works very well for airlines with, say, smaller planes, or maybe not as many. It's a flexible plane as well, with there being three different variants for airlines to choose from, meaning they can mix and match, like a pick and mix. They're able to pick what matches their specifications. Wizz Air has done this with the A321neo, which they believe is beneficial to their own network, but also added the A321XLR, which they believe will be suitable for them as well. What do you think? Is this an aircraft that really suits the needs of so many other airlines right around the globe and makes it for them the perfect airliner? You can let us know down below in the comments. We really appreciate the support. And if you'd like to see more analysis on aircraft that are perfect for their customers, let us know which one down below in the comments. Maybe it's the 787, the 777, or the A330neo. Until then, though, make sure to leave any video suggestions away from, say, this aircraft series that we're doing down below in the video description, where you can find a direct link to our Google Form submission. Take care, be safe, we thank you so much for tuning into this video here on Globetrotting, and hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time. And we'll fly.